Android 9, or should I say Android Pi, is finally out of beta and it is rolling out to the pixels and the essentials of the world already. Well, we have it installed on our Pixel 2 XL here and I've been using it for a while now. So is Android Pi the sweetest Android update of them all? Well, here are my first impressions. Hey guys, I'm Akshay from bworm.com and with Android P becoming Android Pi, now is the perfect time to check out what Google's new OS looks and feels like. But before I get started, how about you hit the bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video. Now that you've done that, let's get some Pi. So this here is Android Pi and the biggest change Google has made here is in navigation. Android Pi comes with gesture navigation and it's weird. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but gesture navigation in Android Pi is quite unintuitive and it takes quite a bit of time to get used to. I mean, you swipe up for multitasking and you swipe right for multitasking as well. That's just redundant on a whole new level. Then you'll have to get rid of the swipe up to get to the app drawer habit because you'll now have to swipe up twice to do that or make an unnaturally long swipe up. You get how annoying this is, right? Then there's the back button. That's still a button for some strange Google-esque reason. I mean, if you're going to gestures, at least go all in. Sure, there have been minor changes and tweaks to the navigation system over the course of the betas, but it still feels very half-baked and not very well thought out, to be honest. If you like it, well, good for you. But for anyone who doesn't like it, you can stick with the older navigation buttons as well. To be honest, that's basically the only part of Android Pie I am not especially happy about. Everything else I love. So let's get to the sweet, sweet part of Android Pie. One of the biggest additions to Android with Android Pie is Google's digital well-being, which is basically Google trying to help us combat smartphone addiction. Digital well-being is a suite of tools that are coming with Android Pie and they are pretty cool. First, there's the dashboard, which shows me an overview of everything I do on my phone. So I can see the amount of time I've spent on my phone so far, the number of times I've unlocked the phone and the number of notifications I've received. Yes, I know it's a lot. I guess Android Pie will really help me. I can even take a more detailed look at my usage. So here I can see that I've used maps for almost two hours on 6th August. That's basically the travel time to and from work. There's also Twitter there and Instagram. It's pretty cool. So now that I know the apps I use a lot, I can even set timers on them to restrict my usage. So as you can see that I use Instagram a lot, I can just go ahead and set a timer on Instagram to say 30 minutes. Once I've used that up, my phone will not let me use Instagram for the rest of the day, which will be frustrating, but definitely helpful. However, if you urgently need to use the app, you can always go to settings and remove the restriction. There's also the wind down feature, which is another thing I'm personally loving. With wind down, I can basically set a bedtime for myself. And after that, Android Pie will turn my display grayscale and even turn on do not disturb if I set it up. This is great because not only does it give a visual trigger to go to sleep, it also makes the content on the display itself look much less attractive and personally, I find that that helps me put my phone down and get to bed. It's really awesome to say Google pays so much attention to making sure people become more responsible in how they use their phones. Digital well-being is definitely a pretty useful feature that Google has added to Android Pie and it definitely looks like it will help people combat smartphone addiction. I haven't used it too long, obviously, but I most definitely will. And let's hope it's actually as useful as it sounds. But let's move on to some of the AI features in Android Pie now. Android Pie comes with a bunch of AI powered features because why shouldn't it? There's adaptive battery, which Google claims will help our phones last longer. Over the developer and public betas, I haven't really found adaptive battery to make a pretty great difference. However, I do like that it informs me of apps that are draining my battery too heavily and I can put them into restricted mode to ensure they don't drain battery in the background. It's a handy feature to have. Then there's adaptive brightness, which definitely sounds like glorified auto brightness, but it's not. Over time, adaptive brightness will learn the adjustments I make to the brightness meter in different scenarios and will start adjusting brightness accordingly. That's a really nifty use of machine learning from Google and I'm pretty impressed. Hopefully, I wouldn't have to play around with the brightness slider on my phone as much as I have to right now. There are other AI features too. There's Slices, which hasn't arrived yet, but will arrive soon. And there's App Actions, which suggests actions I might want to take inside the app drawer itself. Right now, it's suggesting Rupesh and George. That sounds about right. I do annoy these two people a lot and Android Pie knows that, I guess. 
Notifications are improved as well, with Pi also suggesting turning notifications off for apps that I usually swipe the notifications away for. That's useful in a lot of ways but can also get annoying sometimes. Later, Android Pi will also bring smart replies right there in the notifications which should definitely make the notification center even better. All of those were the major changes in Android Pi but there are a bunch of other changes that really deserve a mention. Firstly, Android Pi brings a new visual style. There's rounded corners everywhere, there's more color and there are a lot of visual changes. Rupesh doesn't like it but I like it so it's pretty subjective. There's also the new dark theme toggle in settings, a fresh update to what notifications look like, a new rotation toggle feature that's really handy, a D&D shush mode which lets you turn on D&D by simply keeping the phone upside down on the table, an all new volume menu that changes media volume by default and there are a few under the hood changes like the ability to connect with multiple Bluetooth devices at the same time and even remember the last used volume setting for Bluetooth devices, support for multiple cameras and a lot more. So those were the most important changes that the Android Pi update brings and I think it's a really impressive Android update that not only brings new features but also changes the way we've all used Android over the years. I mean with Android Pi, Google has boarded the AI train with a bunch of AI features it has brought some great tools to combat smartphone addiction and there are a lot of other changes and features that really refine the Android experience. Well, the point is I really like Android Pi and I think it brings some important changes and features to the Android operating system. But that said, I'm still not sold on the new navigation gestures. Hopefully, Android 9.1 will bring more intuitive navigation gestures to Android. Well, that's what I think about the new Android Pi update. And if you ask me, I'm most excited to see how the new AI features really help enhance my experience with using Android over time. But which is your favorite feature? Do let me know in the comments down below. Also, give this video a like and share it with your friends. Lastly, subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Well, that's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.